darling, you're beautiful, gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down, sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on, you have such a beautiful soul. Let your energy radiate. Hello, welcome to your midweek yoga chakra series. This is the sixth out of seven. The sixth chakra is known as the Ajna chakra or the third eye chakra. It's located right here between the eyebrows, just a little bit higher possibly. And it's also associated with the pineal gland, which is towards the middle back of the brain. This is the gland that secretes hormones like melatonin, which is very important for sleep, as well as serotonin, which is important for well-being and happiness. This chakra controls our ability to see the big picture and is our connection to intuition, imagination, and inner wisdom. Think of it as the eye of the soul or the seat of the soul. It registers information beyond the surface layers of physical insight. So it's your gateway out of the I or me and into the interconnectedness of all. So taking it away from I and bringing it to us. So when you're in meditation, you can connect to all, even though you're going inward on your meditation. So that's a little giveaway. It is the chakra of meditation. So we'll be doing a lot of meditative breaths and some fun little meditation, uh, definitely towards the end. So starting with a quick breath practice tonight, it's an invitation as well to close your eyes through your whole practice. Uh, some people use blindfolds. I think that's a little bit risky, especially if this is your first time doing a practice uh, without actually using your physical sight. So we're really going to be using our insight here and our intuition and just kind of feeling um, the balance or even the imbalance in our bodies and just noticing how that makes us feel. So uh, I would like to offer a breath practice that could kind of keep us slow, engaged and moving safely, as well as bringing ourselves into our intuition, into that intuitive mind. So we're just going to take a couple of breaths here together, practicing just a long inhale through the nose. So however you're seated comfortable, we're gonna eventually come to our bellies in a moment, but just so we can start to open up the lung capacity. So you start out with little inhales through the nose and maybe exhale through the mouth. Try to make it about the same amount of time. Don't be too concerned about counting. We really just want to be able to fully expand into the lungs, into the belly, allowing that diaphragm to drop and open. And then on the exhale, allowing that diaphragm to really press up and expel all of the air, but not at a quick pace. We really wanna go at a slow, steady, meaningful, mindful breathing pace tonight. So try this a couple of more rounds inhaling through the nose. And again, if you want to exhale through the mouth or the nose, whatever feels right for you. And again, just honoring that meditative chakra, we will take those long, smooth cleansing breaths and we're going to get on our bellies now. And we're going to try that breath practice once we're on our bellies. I recommend pigeon toeing your feet so that your toes are drawing together and that your heels are sort of spread apart. Sometimes to take a little extra pressure off the lower back, we can open up the legs a little bit wider towards the edges of the mat, but still keep those toes pointing in. We're gonna lay down our foreheads on one you decide uh, of our hands. So the palm is gonna come down to the mat and the forehead is gonna rest on the top of the palm. So get situated so that your elbow is pointing out to the side and you get a nice relaxed neutral cervical spine, drawing the tailbone towards the heels, just relaxing into your breath. Then I'm gonna invite you to take the other hand if this feels comfortable and lay it directly on top of the back of the skull, which will be lying directly behind the third eye. 
Maybe you can let that elbow drop to the floor and just start to support you in the next eight to 10 really deep breaths in, long exhales out. And by propping our forehead up on the hand there, giving our nose and our mouth some space to breathe in and out of. Ajna meaning command or authority. This is the chakra of vision, as I mentioned, insight and your inner guru. It rules the regulation of essential hormones in the body. And you can imagine the deep color indigo blue that is associated with this chakra. And maybe even during the practice tonight, maybe start to breathe in that color, exhale that color, allowing you to open up that chakra and balance it out. This chakra symbol contains a two-petal lotus flower. It has the symbol of Om at the center inside of an upside-down triangle. The element associated with this chakra is light. And the Ajna chakra transcends time. It's said to destroy the karma of past lives and give liberation through inner knowledge. Its attributes, again, are intelligence, understanding, self-recognition, and psychic ability, which is where the pineal gland comes in. When you're ready, we're going to just take our hands to our side, to our rib cage, around the breast area, just setting up for cobra here, but we're going to maybe come up on our fingertips if that's comfortable. And you definitely might want to bring your legs together for this. Toes pointed straight towards the back of the mat. Again, drawing that tailbone down and releasing any of the glute muscles that may be constricted right now. And on the inhale, we're going to tuck the chin towards the chest. We're going to slowly press lightly into the fingertips as the head rises, chest opens up. And on the exhale, we're going to allow ourselves to come down on the forehead once again to the mat. And on the inhale, rising up again, taking those nice, slow, long inhale till we get to the very top. And on the exhale, coming down. And just go at your own pace for the next two rounds. Your slow, smooth, methodical inhales are gonna be different than mine because I'm talking. And again, if your exhales are just a little bit longer than the inhales, you are winning. And the next time your head is down at the ground, we're gonna flatten the palms. We're gonna curl the toes under and press up into our tabletop position. Just making sure that all of our alignment is feeling good and feeling right. A Little bit of wiggle here, maybe coming up on the toes. On the inhale, as we look forward, the belly drops, tailbone and shoulders almost try to press together. Nice smooth inhale. And on the exhale, the belly rises, the tailbone draws towards the sky. As the hips drop, the shoulders drop, the head drops, pressing into the hands, into the palms, maybe even flattening the feet at the tops, getting nice long extended stretches here. Because of those long inhales and exhales, you can really be focused and precise. And again, I invite you to keep your eyes closed throughout the practice. If anything feels a little wonky or my instruction is not clear and you need to take a gander at the screen, just do it slowly, carefully. No quickie transitions here tonight. On the next inhale, we're gonna come back into neutral position and maybe take a look over at the right shoulder as the right hip draws towards the right shoulder for a nice side stretch here on the inhale. And then maybe we start to exhale as we go towards the left side. So we're looking over the left shoulder, left hip going towards maybe the left shoulder as well. And just start to take some little sickles here of the body, inhaling and exhaling really engaging in that full stretch, allowing the toes to be curled under or tops of the feet to be flat, whatever gives you the most room and maybe gives you a little challenge. And then when you're ready, we're gonna settle into table and start to take circles. So 
slowly leaning over a little bit on the wrist towards the front. Maybe that's your inhale. And we bring it over to the right. So the hips are circling to the right and then they draw back towards the heels and we start to exhale as we come back towards the left side, moving forward to center. And we continue those inhale, exhale circles, maybe two or three. Again, really breathing in, exhaling. Getting a full extension before we end up in the center and switch sides. So now we're gonna inhale, maybe come over to the left, dip the hips down towards the heels. And then as we exhale, come towards the right, finishing up that exhale in the center as we come back in for the left side again on the inhale, exhaling, nice circles. And if you wanna get the head involved here, dropping it down as you drop back to your knees, maybe looking up as you come forward, completely up to you, or you can leave that neck neutral and just continue to chew. Keep the gaze, even though you're not with your eyes open, flat towards the mat. All right, we're gonna meet back up in table. And we're just gonna sit back on those heels for a child's pose, but we're gonna keep the fingertips engaged. So we're really not gonna put the third eye onto the mat. We're just gonna let it hover there for a nice stretch in child's pose. Again, fingertips, palms are up, almost like we have little bird cages in each hand. And then we're gonna inhale and take the little walk over to the right with the hands. We're gonna do a nice side stretch here on the left side. So from the left hip all the way up the left rib cage, left armpit, elbows, fingertips. And just take your nice slow inhale, exhale here. One more, nice inhale. Exhale, walk towards the center. And on the next inhale, we're gonna take the hands over towards the left so that we're stretching out that right rib cage, right hip, all the way through the hollow of the right armpit, right elbow, fingertips all stretching out. A couple more nice smooth breaths in and out and in and out. And again, just remembering that color of deep cobalt blue, perhaps right at that third eye. Coming back to center, we're gonna walk the hands back towards the knees. And if it's comfortable for you to sit on your knees and sit back in Vajrasana, great. Otherwise take a nice comfortable seated pose. As we inhale, arms are gonna rise up towards the sky. Drawing those shoulders down, elbows nice and straight, fingertips engaged on the inhale. On the exhale, we're gonna bring the hands together and draw them down, knuckles at third eye. So we're doing an Anjali Mudra right here at the third eye for the exhale. And continuing on with that exhale, the hands now are gonna to drop towards the sides as we start to reach up for sun breaths. Nice inhale as the arms come up meeting at the top like a little candle. And on the exhale, bringing and drawing in all that energy to the third eye before we finally have the end of our exhale, arms come down and we start the process all over again. A Couple of more breaths here, just opening up your sun breath, drawing in the energy towards the third eye through Anjali Mudra. Now we're gonna inhale, arms are gonna come up towards the sky and we're gonna exhale and we're gonna take that left hand and bring it towards the outer right thigh or right knee. The right hand is gonna come to the sacrum. Maybe the palm presses against the sacrum. The right elbow draws, draws towards the back of the room. And as we inhale, the crown draws up and the exhale, the belly draws back. And we start to look over that right shoulder for a nice twist. So if you're sitting down, you can use leverage of the right hand to the floor. And just take some nice long breaths here into your Ajna Chakra. 
And maybe start playing with breathing out of the back of the skull. Play with breathing up the spine and out the third chakra. And on the inhale, arms are gonna rise up to center. And on the exhale, we're gonna come now to the left side. So left palm presses against the back sacrum, right hand against the outer edge of the left thigh. And again, just kind of play with that breath. And maybe there's a little spot somewhere, maybe one of the five chakras that we have reviewed already. Maybe you wanna play with breathing into that chakra, exhaling out the third eye. We're breathing in through the third eye and exhaling out one of those chakras where you may need a little relief or you feel a little blockage or imbalance. You're armed with lots of information now. And on the inhale, arms are gonna come up. Nice deep breath, exhale. We're gonna bring those hands back to third eye, Anjali Mudra. And we're gonna come back into table. And just wiggle it out a little bit here. And when you're ready, curl the toes under. So we're gonna inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna slowly press up into downward facing dog. So you can do that with that knee. You can do that your standard traditional. Maybe you wanna walk your dog. Just keep those hips drawing up towards the sky. Belly is engaged, head is hanging. Fingertips are engaged. The inner elbow creases are facing forward to support the shoulders. Enjoy those nice long inhale, exhale breaths. Heels can be up, down, whatever's comfortable for you in your downward facing dog. On the next exhale, start to bend the knees and slowly walk the hands towards the feet. We're going to go into a forward fold. So if that's comfortable for you with legs hip distance apart or legs together, that's up to you. You might also decide to wrap your forearms around the back calves or your wrists around, or maybe just grab your ankles. And with that slight little drawing of the torso towards the legs or pulling the arms towards the legs, the legs towards the torso, you might notice that you can straighten out those knees and lift the hips just a little bit higher, which is gonna draw the crown just a little bit lower. Enjoy a couple of those long breaths here. Definitely encourage some backbone breathing, maybe coming down the backbone, which is actually up towards the top of the head. And then exhaling from the third chakra down the front body, creating some space right at the fold of the belly to the thigh. On the inhale, we're gonna press the hands into the shins and rise for halfway lift. Now you can look straight down at your mat because maybe your eyes are closed. So there's nothing to really gaze at ahead of you. But try to draw the shoulders back anyway and see if you can just shine the heart on the inhale. On the exhale, forward fold. Take the hands to the hips and we're slowly gonna start to exhale and rise vertebrae by, by vertebrae, very slow, chin to chest. Head is gonna be the last thing to rise as we come into Tadasana. Again, your choice of where your feet are gonna be placed. Whatever finds uh, the most stability for you, especially with your eyes closed, you might want a little bit of a wider stance. We're going to really draw the energy from the four corners of the feet, whether they're together or apart. Bring the energy from the earth, raising those kneecaps, engaging the quads, the hamstrings, a little bit of the lower glute, drawing the belly in, lifting the rib cage, drawing the chin in, rolling the shoulders back and just allowing the arms to fall to the sides like waterfalls. Just settling into this peaceful moment of your Tadasana before we start our sun salutations and allowing yourself to become aware of the big picture. The ability to see everything shifts, our perspectives. This allows us to see our own blind spot and understand ourselves in the context of the collective. 
deep inhale now, arms are gonna rise up, Urdhva Hastasana, remember to drop those shoulders, straighten those elbows, nice engaged fingertips. Exhale, hands are gonna to come to Anjali Mudra, again, right there at the third eye. Take a nice deep breath in. And a long exhale out as hands rise. A nice inhale once again for Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold through chair. So we're gonna sit back, hips are gonna sit back, knees are gonna bend. And until you cannot fold any more forward, come into your forward fold. Allow the head to drop. Inhale, halfway lift, pressing the hands to the shins. Exhale, we're gonna walk the hands out to high plank. Heels are gonna be over the toes. Hips are gonna be high. Belly's engaged for that inhale. And on the exhale, knees drop, tops of feet drop. We slowly lower the chest and chin between the hands as we scoop up for that long, smooth inhale. On the exhale, curling the toes under, coming right through table into down dog, finishing that exhale. Walking the hands back towards the feet on the inhale. Exhale, forward fold, maybe a little tug there with the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, pressing up, shine the heart. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up however you like, rooting to rise, Urdhva Hastasana, hands up. Exhale, hands come together, Anjali Mudra to the third eye. Nice breath here, in. Exhale, arms rise up. Inhale, exhale, fold, drop down, inhale, lift. Again, all at your own pace here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, walking the hands out. Nice breath here in plank. And on your following exhale, you're gonna lower your knees, drop your chest and chin to rise and inhale the low cobra. When you're ready, exhale and coming through table to downward facing dog. Walking the hands back one more time on the inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, shining the heart. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rooting to rise, bringing it up. Exhale, Anjali Mudra to the third eye. Nice breath in. Long exhale out as we reach back up. Another nice inhale for our upward stretch before we exhale, coming into our forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk the hands out. Inhale, your last plank. Take your cobra. Really enjoy the stretch here before you exhale. And we all meet in downward facing dog. I'm gonna invite you here to either come up on the left foot or left ball mound and raise that right toe to the sky or you can keep that left heel down. I go either way sometimes, but it's really fun to bend that right knee, look under the right armpit with that heel down. Feel that stretch coming out of the right hip crease. Take a couple of circles here, not forgetting to take those long, beautiful breaths. And not forgetting to go the other direction if you are circling. We're gonna turn the hips back towards the mat. Point that right toe back towards the wall or ceiling. And on the exhale, coming up on that left ball mound now, bringing the knee to nose. Nice height there. Inhale, toe up to the sky. Exhale, right knee to nose. Inhale, lift. And on this last exhale, we're gonna bring knee to nose, but plant the right foot right there in front between the two hands, lowering that left knee, flattening out the top of the left foot. We want to come up onto the knee into a, high, a low lunge, come up as you will. You can inhale and reach forward with arms up, or you can just walk yourself right up your leg. We're all gonna meet on the inhale here. Hands are gonna come together and we're gonna exhale, bringing those knuckles to third eye. 
and do some sun breaths here. So the final exhale will be at the sides as we inhale, scooping up all the energy, all the light, hands together, bringing it into third eye in our lunge. Working on some balance here. If you feel the need to close your eyes in any of the balancing poses, just find a little space, a little spot to focus in on and breathe into that spot in front of you. On the final exhale, hands are gonna come down to frame the foot. The left hand will stay planted on the mat as the right hand can either come back to that sacrum, to the hip crease, to the top of the right thigh for a nice press and twist. So again, we're drawing the belly in towards the back on our twists. On the inhale, maybe the crown extends forward. And of course, if you wanna just bring that right arm up towards the sky, that's cool too. One more nice inhale. And one long exhale before we bring the hands back down to frame the foot, curling the left toe under, lifting the left knee, sliding that right foot flat back for plank. And finally exhaling downward dog. This time coming up onto the right ball of the foot or staying with the heel down. We're gonna take that left toe towards the sky, bend the knee, take some circles. I'm gonna try coming up on the ball of my toe this time on the right side. Feels a little unstable with my eyes closed, ain't gonna lie. And the heel, oh, sorry, the hips are gonna to come towards the mat as we extend that left toe one more time towards the back. On the inhale and on the exhale, bringing knee to nose. Inhale, extend, exhale, knee to nose. Being up on the right ball mound really helps get some height on the knee to nose. I think I gave an extra one, so we're gonna step up. Left foot between the hands, right knee is gonna drop, right toes and top of foot are gonna be flat. Get up however you would like in your lunge. We're going to inhale and arrive together with arms up. Little mini back bend here. As we exhale, hands will come together and you got it. We're gonna bring it down to the third eye. Coming through for our sun breath. Nice big circles, inhale, rise up. Take the next three at your own pace. Really bending into the front knee. Pressing into the right, left outer toe, the pinky toe helps a lot with the stability here. When you're ready, the exhales are gonna bring the hands to frame the foot. The right hand this time is gonna press into the mat. And we're gonna take that left hand and either bring it straight up to the sky, stack it back there where our lower backbone is, or we can bring it into our hip crease or take that press into the left top thigh and really get a nice engaged twist on our inhale to, to uh, lengthen, exhale to twist. On the next exhale, the hands are gonna plant in front of that, sorry, around that front foot, curling up the right toe, raising that knee, step the left foot back, plank, downward facing dog. All right, just picking up the pace a little bit here, but you certainly don't have to pick up your breath as long as you're following the inhale, exhale cues. I think we'll all end up in the same spot around the same time. We're gonna inhale, taking that right foot up towards the sky. Exhale, we're gonna step right to the front and we're gonna plant that left foot down in preparation for warrior two. So the left toes are gonna face the left front of the mat and the left heel is gonna face the back right of the mat. Again, come up into that pose however you like. We wanna end up together with our front right knee bent, right leg drawing towards the right, left leg extended towards the back. We're gonna turn that torso towards the left and hopefully our eyes are still closed and we're finding some stability there if we need to uh, change the space between our legs just for this, that's fine. No one's watching. <laughs> Inhale, the arms will come up as if they are parallel. So sometimes I like to just plant my hands on my thighs, especially if my eyes are closed and just raise the arms straight up from my legs. 
turning the head over to gaze or what would be a gaze over the middle finger of the right hand. Again, if you do need to open up your eyes, maybe pick a knuckle to focus in on the breath as we begin. One more. Then on the exhale, the left hand is gonna come to the back thigh. We're gonna straighten that front leg, turn the palm up towards the sky and continue that exhale as the arm comes right over for peaceful warrior. Nice inhale, exhale here. Really enjoying the length of the pose from the right toe to the right middle finger. Keeping that left shoulder away from the left ear. On the exhale, we're gonna bend back into that front knee, take the forearm to the top of the thigh. You decide what you wanna do with that left arm. So again, you can kind of get it behind you in a twist. You can bring it right up towards the sky in your side angle, or you can bring it right over that left ear for an extended side angle, which means the left pinky will be facing towards the floor. The gaze either way should start to be up towards the ceiling and perhaps the chest as well as we take a nice cleansing breath in and a long one out, a nice one in. And on the exhale, we're gonna press on up to five pointed star. So the toes are gonna to turn towards the long side of the mat. The arms are gonna be up in the sky. Nice inhale here. And maybe bring that exhale through the top like a candle down to the third eye. And maybe just take one sun breath here as we inhale, coming up wide with the arms. Exhale once again, coming in to third eye, bringing all that beautiful energy in. And now I invite you to open up the palms. So you're just sort of on a same level with the upper arms. Elbows are bent, palms are facing forward, fingers are engaged. We're going to lean into our ball mound and just bring our heels in a little bit. So now toes are fa facing to the outer edges of the mat. Heels are drawn in a bit. Arms are like goal posts. And take a nice inhale here. And on the exhale, start to bend the knees and come down into goddess pose and feel free to shout it out. On the inhale, we're gonna rise back up. Maybe the arms come up overhead this time for a nice stretch. And on the exhale, come back into goddess arms, coming into your squat. One more time, inhale and exhale. Finally, coming back up into five-pointed star, we're gonna to start to heel toe the feet together and maybe come into a little tree pose. Now it's gonna be super tricky with your eyes closed, but if you bear with me here, we don't have to go crazy. We're gonna come into a Tadasana, but we're gonna put our hands at our hips. So just to stabilize the pelvis, get everything into play like we did before, working our way up through the foundation of the legs, belly engaged, chin, drawing the crown up. Let's take that right foot. We're gonna slowly start to lift it to the ball of our foot. And we're gonna turn the right knee out towards the right. And then we're just gonna drag that foot so that we can lean the right heel onto the inner left ankle. That's it, you're good. That's a kickstand, it's a tree pose. And with eyes closed, that could be very challenging especially when we start to release the hands and move them up to grow our tree. Now, if you're feeling frisky and you wanna go for your traditional tree pose, go for it. Just please be safe. And certainly if you fall down, you'll get back up. We'll still be here for you. <laughs> so we're gonna to start to inhale and grow the branches up for our trees. Maybe wiggle the fingers, take some nice clean inhales and exhales here. And imagine that the wind and the breeze is just coming through the branches. Really engaging the belly, both on the inhale and exhale. Finally, drawing the hands together above for a traditional tree pose, palms together in Anjali Mudra. Nice inhale, nice reach, lifting up the rib cage, the rib cage pulling out of the torso, torso pulling out of the hips, hips pulling away from the thighs, and so on. 
And on the exhale, drawing that energy of your tree into your third eye through Anjali Mudra. Hands come to the sides and now we can just release the foot and shake it out a little bit. Maybe swing in the arms, do whatever you wanna do. Once again, no one's watching, so you're all set. <laughs> I'm actually gonna roll my shoulders a little bit. For some reason, I'm holding a little bit of tension there. All right, we're gonna come into the right foot this time and we're gonna kickstand that left uh, heel against the right ankle. Make sure that you have that engagement going on in the right leg all the way up, just zip the belly, zip the chest, chin, string coming right through the crown of the head. Arms are in place at the hips or by your sides. As that left knee points towards the left, we're gonna inhale, arms are gonna reach up, reaching our branches up. Again, take that breath as if there was wind through the leaves of the trees, maybe do some swaying. And if you wanna challenge yourself a little bit, you wanna see well, how does it feel when I pick up my foot? You know, what's happening here? Do I have to tap that foot down? Also take note of what's happening in the other parts of your tree, not just your roots. What's happening in the trunk? What's happening at the connection of the trunk to the branch? Is there any stiffness like I just had? What's happening in your face? One more breath. And when you're ready, we're gonna inhale, bringing the hands together. Nice long tree pose, rising up, rising from the root, knee, thigh, inner thighs, maybe engaged, rising from the hips, rib cage, all the way up the arms till we exhale, bringing hands into third eye at Anjali Mudra or Anjali Mudra at third eye. Arms come down, shake it off, move around a little bit. And I'm gonna invite you to open up your legs a little bit. Now we're gonna go into that wide leg position. Hands are gonna to come to the hips this time. And if you're okay with keeping your eyes closed, you can also put one hand or both hands in front of you. And we're gonna slowly start to hinge forward to a forward fold. Either way, we're gonna keep the hands to the floor. Feel free to bend some knees a little bit, get a little comfortable there, allowing the crown of the head to draw down towards the earth. Coming into some stillness, taking your nice cleansing breath, and maybe even here doing what we did in our first forward fold with the legs together. Maybe taking the hands around the backs of the calves, or maybe just around the ankles, and giving a little tug allowing the crown to drop down and feel the hips draw up. Again, maybe taking some cleansing breaths in through the third eye and up the backbone, which is really down the backbone. And then allowing the exhale to come up the front body. And then try it the other direction. Again, if you have a wall or you have any furniture nearby or a prop that you can hang on to in forward fold, that would be great. Otherwise, we're gonna take one more cleansing breath here before we press the hands down into the earth, coming up for a halfway lift. Hands can come to those hips again as we slowly rise into our five-pointed star, nice inhale, very slow. Turning that left foot now towards the back of the mat. So we're pacing the opposite direction as we get into our warrior two on this side. Bending that left knee, nice comfortable stance. The right toes are gonna to point towards the upper right. The left heel is gonna to point towards the lower left. And we're gonna bend into that left knee. Turning towards the right now with the torso, arms will come up into our traditional warrior two. And we can start to turn the head and have that gaze or pseudo gaze over the left middle knuckle. Nice cleansing breaths here. Left knee drawing towards the left, fully engaged. If you need to open your eyes, do so. Otherwise, we're gonna take one more inhale. And on the next exhale, the right hand is gonna to come towards the back thigh. We're gonna straighten out that front leg and the left arm is gonna come up and over for peaceful warrior. Getting that beautiful extension 
from the left toes all the way up to the left pinky, ring, middle, pointer, even the thumb. And taking a nice inhale here before we exhale, bending that left knee, taking the forearm to the left thigh. Once again, doing as you wish with your right arm for side angle pose. So we can either just make that traditional or take it over to extended and just have some nice breaths here as we try to turn that chest up towards the sky. Really challenging with the eyes closed, just allowing yourself to come to the other side of the mat. Sometimes gets a little bit challenging and confusing and scary. Just go in, we're all in it together. When you're ready, inhale. Arms are gonna come up. We're gonna go right back into our five-pointed star. This time we can take our hands to our hips and we can heel toe our feet together. And I'd like you to draw your heels together and your toes out to each side. So right to toes towards the right, left toes towards the left, almost as if a ballerina is in first position. The legs are gonna to draw together nice and engaged. Inhale, raising the arms up. Exhale, you guessed it, bringing the hands into Anjali Mudra at the third eye. Inhale, arms rise up. We're gonna come up to the balls of our toes. So maybe we just come up like a little half inch. So the heels are just gonna rise a half inch, like a little mini kitten heel. And then exhale down. Pressing into the hands, really pressing those palms together, reaching up through the ribs. Inhaling, rising up on the balls. You might be a little teeter-tottery, moving around, really looking like a ballerina on tippy toes before you exhale and drop the heels down. We're gonna rise one more time to your fullest extent. Again, if you need to open your eyes and find a drishti gaze in front of you, please do so for that inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna keep the heels lifted and we're gonna bend those knees as we draw the hand towards the third eye in Anjali Mudra, we come into a yogi squat. Take your time. If you need to stay here or put your hands on the ground for the next two or three inhales, please do so. Otherwise, we're gonna to try to inhale, pressing back to standing position, keeping the heels engaged and up. Arms reach up towards the sky. And on the exhale, bringing those hands to third eye, coming back down into our yogi squat. And you guessed it, when you're ready to inhale, we're gonna try that baby again. Nice and tall, tall candle. Exhale, bringing it down. We're all gonna meet here with our hands on the ground in yogi squat. Totally okay to keep your heels up. You don't need to ground them down for this. We're just gonna take that left hand, press it into the earth, press the left elbow into the left inner knee. Maybe take the right hand and do that little thigh press. So as we inhale, we're growing long. And then on the exhale, we're just able to twist and look over that right shoulder. Again, if it's in your practice tonight to do a little bind or you wanna bring your right arm up towards the sky, go ahead. I just recommend you do it with eyes closed if possible and certainly some deep cleansing breath. On the next exhale, both hands are gonna to come to the earth as the right one plants down, right elbow engages with the inner right knee, left hand. Pressing onto that left thigh. Nice inhale for the length and a long exhale for the twist. And do what you will with your arms. On the next exhale, both hands are gonna come down to the mat. Walk our hands, kind of pivot on our toes. Walk the hands back towards that original front of our mat. Lower that left knee. Walk the hands full hand length, if not more, in front of us. That right knee now is going to be able to come right behind the right wrist. We're going to slide that left leg to make room for the right foot, and it's going to come right underneath the left thigh or left hip crease. The top of the foot is going to press down. We're going to really engage that back leg coming up on our fingertips for high pigeon. So by engaging that back leg, reaching up through the chest, through the heart, nice inhale, eyes closed. And slowly exhale, we can start to bend our elbows and lower down into our pigeon. And I'm recommending a fist over fist posture. So if you had your two fists, you can take your right hand perhaps 
So the right outer edge of your fist, your right pinky is against the mat. And your right forefinger and right thumb is what holds the left fist. And then you can lower your third eye onto the forefinger and thumb of your left hand. So a nice little fist stack here raises the roof, allows you some nice breathing space so you can continue your breath work. Brings you back into focus, starts to settle down the body. When the third eye chakra is balanced, one is his own master without fear of death and free of attachment to material things. So some of the ways to balance out this chakra with crystals would be to use a lapis lazuli, opalite, think about any of those blue, deep blue stones, as well as those opaly moonstone type of stones, also Lemurian seeds, kyanite, agate thunder, angelite, apatite, azurite, and fluorite. On the next exhale that you have, you're gonna take your hands, plant them on either side, and press up from your pigeon. Curling that left toe under, lifting the left knee, engaging it, you'll be able to slide that right foot back into plank. And then you can go ahead and take that left knee now to the left wrist, lowering that right leg, flattening out the top of the foot, and maybe coming up to fingertips here. So again, nice engagement of the chest moving forward, nice inhalation. And on the exhale, if you're gonna do your fist stack, why don't you try it the other way? So maybe the left hand is on the bottom this time and the right is on top. You can just lay down that third eye, nuzzle right in there for your long cleansing breaths in pigeon. As I go over some essential oils that also help with the balancing out and opening of this chakra, anything that's woodsy and green. So think about sandalwood, cypress, vitivier, angelica root, and anything that's um, herbaceous. So bay laurel, cleary sage, rosemary, marjoram, and juniper, love juniper. So to open the third eye is see ourselves fully to see all of the ways that we play the victim, all of the ways we project our judgments and insecurities and assumptions onto others. So that's a little sobering. We're gonna take some nice cleansing breaths here and start to maybe even come into a natural breathing pattern as we wind down our practice. And when you're ready, hands will press up. We will curl the toes of the right foot under, lifting that right knee, allowing the left leg to slide back into plank. We're just gonna lower the knees for a moment. And I'm gonna give you just one last option, but I don't want you to worry about your breath work here. If you wanna come into your forearms, clasping the hands, we're gonna curl the toes under, raising the hips, for dolphin pose. And when I'm working the third chakra, I like to just hinge forward a little bit. And again, I can just lean my third eye right on the thumb knuckles of my hand. I kind of open up the thumb knuckles so they're flat. I just take a little energetic work here, drawing the belly up. The heels may or may not connect with the ground. Really just trying to make some final connectivity without necessarily going into a headstand, which would definitely be great, a great protocol for this practice. This is just sort of your little option out of that. Two more breaths if you're in here. Otherwise, enjoy a child's pose or a seed pose or down dog. So many delicious options. When you're ready, we're all gonna meet in child's pose. 
One nice cleansing breath here. Third eye chakra to the earth. As we slowly rise, coming into butterfly pose. So the soles of the feet are gonna be drawn together. Feel free to grab a blanket to maybe put under your tush. Gives you a little bit of elevation and a little bit more ability to jet forward. If you can't make it in a full forward fold, no problem, because we're gonna do stacked fists at our feet or you can have a bolster or something to lean on and stack fists there. So again, we just wanna connect that third eye to the fist. You decide what goes on the top, what goes on the bottom. And as always, I always recommend to inhale to lengthen, exhale to fold over. And just really allow the body to drop in. And notice if there is any tension happening anywhere in the face, back of the head, top of the head. How are the ears feeling? How are the inner ears feeling? How is that fifth chakra doing today? How's the throat and the shoulders? Moving into the fourth chakra, the heart space. What's happening? Are we feeling opening in the back now with our fold? Are we feeling some constriction in the chest? Do we need to wiggle around and move a bit and just take a nice deep breath in there? Allow the belly to loosen, soften our third chakra. Allowing the second chakra to open up. And finally feeling the stability and the grounding of our first chakra, our legs, our connectivity to the earth, our foundation. One more deep cleansing breath here before we super slowly start to press up and rise. And then I invite you to extend your legs out in front of you. And if you wanna do it so that your heels are on the soft cushiony part of the mat, you can take a little micro bend in the knee. And once again, if you have a little lift of a cushion underneath you and you take that nice inhale for your forward fold, it just gives you a little bit more space and a little bit more room. And you can support your head however you like here. Maybe you're just reaching past your feet, maybe a slight little hold at the soles of the feet. And once again, just kind of do a little, a little check, a little chakra check, see what's happening. And just to remind you some of the signs, the third chakra is out of balance. That may include a non-assertive or an indecision type of feeling fear of success, or maybe even being overconfident, moodiness due to hormone imbalance, stubborn behavior, or lack of purpose. Signs of blockages in the Ajna chakra could be headaches, blurry vision, eye strain, sinus issues, as well as burnout or fatigue. And then there is another dark side to blockages in the Ajna chakra, which would be any kind of nightmares or disturbances in your sleep, which again, ties back to the pineal gland and how we need to make sure that we nurture that and keep that decalcified. Um, staying away from any additional fluorides may also help. So you might wanna take fluorides out of your mouthwash and toothbrushing routine. When you're ready, we're gonna rise up and we're gonna do something just a little different. So if you really wanna take Shavasana, I definitely highly recommend you do this after this practice, but I am gonna end with something that is called a Trataka meditation. And I think it could be equally as soothing and relaxing. So again, you're just in a natural breathing pattern at this point in time. 
And what I'd like you to do is if your eyes are not open already and you might wanna rub your hands together and place the palms over the eyes to get some energy flowing and then start to flutter the eyes open through the cracks in the fingers. You can start to lower the hands. And we're gonna look for something in front of us. And we did this a few weeks ago where we had like a little special something in front of us. And I don't know if that's still in the room with you or maybe there's a photograph or a crystal or the edge of a table or maybe just a little spot on the floor. Something that you can start to gaze into with a steady eye. We're gonna try not to blink. We're gonna stay in a very calm breathing pattern. We're gonna draw our crown up and sit in a nice tall engaged position. We're just gonna slowly start to stare into that space. And start to think about transcending into the illusion of duality. And what does that mean? Becoming one with that spot, but noticing as you stare into that place, that little point on your crystal, maybe even a, a third eye of a person in a photograph that you're able to look at. And notice how everything around that spot starts to blur and almost become one. Start to feel that transcendence of being with everything and all as opposed to being with self. And when the eyes need to close or you feel a little tear start to trickle down your cheek, please close your eyes, keep them closed and see if you can see that spot within the darkness and the veil behind your eyes. if you can still see that item, maybe a point of light, maybe a dark circle. And just stay there within the concentration at the third eye, pituitary gland, pineal gland, feeling the warmth there as perhaps the vision or inner vision of that object starts to dissipate. Maybe take a nice deep cleansing breath in through the third eye and out possibly also through the third eye or crown of the head. Feel free to take another one as you rub your hands together one more time. Get that energy flowing just above the eyes as you start to flutter them open. Hands can come into your lap for a moment as I show you our final practice of mudra and chant. So the chant is going to actually be om or aum that is associated with this chakra. So tonight I'm going to do the AUM version of it. So the sound would be aum, trailing off the M. We will uh, be doing a mudra that is called the mudra of the great hand. So if you take any one of your hands, whichever you prefer um, and hold up the palm, we're gonna take the ring finger and curl it into the palm. So we're almost having a little curled action there with the ring finger curling in, the tip of the finger is gonna just lock right in there to the middle of the palm. Then we're gonna take these fingers, which is the thumb, the forefinger and the middle finger, we're gonna join them at the tips. The pinky finger is going to remain straight out. And we're gonna take the tips of those three fingers and put them right there on our third eye. I recommend keeping your eye open and gazing into the palm, maybe in the area where the middle finger is. It's a very soft focus and it's really wonderful, almost like eagle pose where you can really just drift right in through your body part as a centering. So we're gonna rise tall on the inhale, crown draws up, belly draws in. And on the exhale, remember, we're gonna start with our OM mantra. So one more inhale, exhale. Inhale, 
Last one. Hands come into prayer. Chin drops towards the chest. Thanking ourselves for coming to our practice. So thank you for joining me. Thank each other for coming in and joining virtually in community. Thumb knuckles now to our third eye center as we bow in gratitude. Namaste. Look forward to seeing you next week. Till then, take care. Darling, darling, you're beautiful. Gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down. Sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on. You have such a beautiful soul. Let your energy radiate.